Last Thursday, I made a video about how Bitcoin would crash over the next 10 days, giving you the top three scenarios of how Bitcoin would play out in literally drawing price paths. The third being no crash, the top two saying yes crash. As you can see behind me, I made that video right where this pink line is, and I focused on the second the second most probable scenario was that Bitcoin price would come down here and then come all the way up to the daily 10 as it approached this horizontal. And I will throw on that part portion of the video happened at about 21 minutes and 30 seconds in. This was the second most likely scenario. I said, Bitcoin comes down to 19,665. Let's see to where it actually hit and boom. Okay, I was about $60 off there. And then in that second most likely scenario, see this white line was coming down to this horizontal. I anticipated that whales would want to come out strong on, I don't know if I mentioned Monday, but would come up and run Bitcoin up to this white line as uh, the stock markets took a baby bounce of some sort, not a reversal, but a bounce. And uh, before then this white line pushes price but so white uh the white line is the resistance and it forms a triangle and price gets trapped between the blue line and the white line and goes do 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 and in that case it would be uh september uh, in the september 3rd or 4th in which bitcoin would finally be pushed below this line right behind me so what we're going to do in this video here today is let's dissect when did this the second most probable scenario from that video seems to be playing out uh, what we're going to cover first is what is the exact moment that this uh, scenario becomes less probable, and therefore the third scenario of no crash below this blue line becomes more probable. We're gonna cover that first, it's very simple. It's literally this white line, and I'll show you how price will move in that case. And then the second thing what we'll do is we're gonna talk about the timing. Market open was really volatile today, and I want to show you something in the charts that happened right around here and I will not tag this in the video, but stay tuned. In the video, I will show you how you would have had a strong heads up, ba literally based off the formation of small candles that whales were going to go grab liquidity up top, and you would have known before the market opened that that horrible closure would be met with a Monday open of filling the gap. You literally could see it in Bitcoin because whales were playing with Bitcoin 20 minutes before market open. It was clear as day. I'll show that to you at the end so you can be on your toes in taking that tip in the future. Are you ready? Let's get it. Again, that video, the title was Bitcoin price uh, and crypto crash coming by Tuesday. And then at that moment was at 20, about 21 minutes, there are tags in there. So you can use the tags from that video if you wanted to quickly review how I anticipated how uh, that price would move in this way. And as of now, uh, so the, the key to that is this origin line here, price typically really catapults when an EMA specifically pushes price uh, below, so it traps price under it and price uses this as support, this as resistance, It's and it forms essentially a triangle like this. And remember, when I draw a triangle on my chart, you might want to do the same because they typically play out. If I could find out where the hell my triangle shape is, I don't know. Oh, here it is. Okay. Anyway, it'll form something to this effect as this white line comes down. And this white line will swoop and price will go boom, 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 boom. And then it's the battle of what's stronger. Is the support stronger than the resistance? And if so, that means price will get above. And the third scenario will play out where there will be no crash. And, you know, Bitcoin will fly up to probably 23K to meet the, uh, as I covered in my last video, the bottom of the previous trading channel at 23K. And I'll show you that here real fast. So if, and I'll, I'll dissect what that would look like before 23K would happen. So going to this chart right here. I'm going to go to the one hour chart. Bitcoin was in a 65 day channel. See this pretty channel. And so my channels are, my charts are very sexy. That's why new viewers, you come to my uh, channel to see very, very clear and concise charts that you can understand very easily. That's why you hit the thumbs up, you subscribe and you hit the bell with all alerts because I'm going to help keep you uh, in a, uh, in the know within your crypto journey and then returning viewers always hit the thumbs up for me help out your content creator here so if what i'm about to show you plays out and i'll show you how it would play out before it gets all the way up there it would have severe severe trouble re-entering the bottom of this channel and by the time it gets there it could be as high as 23k but before we even talk about 23k being realistic we need to go back to that white line on the chart all right and essentially all you want to do here is know that the daily 10 EMA, let's throw on, I'm technically using the one hour 200 because it's smoother, but it's it's the same thing as the daily 10. That's what this white line is. So you might want to throw on the one hour 200 EMA on your chart. 
you can essentially uh, roll with a horizontal down here. So you want three things on your chart. You want a horizontal around 19.9, and that's one. You want a horizontal around 20,700, roughly, okay, as resistance. See these wicks down? 20, let's call it 20,750. The third thing is the daily 10 EMA. These are the only three things that you really need on your chart to understand what Bitcoin price is going to do on the hourly chart for, I mean, let's, let's count this out, for the next two to three days. Breaking it down, really simple. That's why new viewers, uh, hopefully you've uh, subscribed to the channel because literally this will keep you in the know on Bitcoin and it'll keep you feeling under control. Okay, oh, I'm not going to freak out. It's under this. Therefore, the second most probable situation that Tim or Cosas Verdes, however you refer to me, uh, was talking about last Thursday. It's still probably the most second, uh, second most probable scenario that's playing out, right? Now let's look at what will happen when, um, what needs to occur for this to become uh, not as probable. Therefore, the third situation of no, that price will not crash below this uh, would play out. And very simply, you would need to essentially see two things is uh, first price gets above this horizontal and uses as support, which would then create the, the one hour 200 EMA or the same thing as the daily 10 to start curling up. This used as support, this gets a positive slope at that exact moment. Then it looks like, uh, this low right behind me right here is going to end up being a local low and Bitcoin then has a stronger chance. Again, it doesn't guarantee it, but it does put it as one of the top three most probable situations. If those two things happen, this guy's used as support. This white line gets a positive slope at that point, 23, a race up to 23 K over the next 10 days after that becomes among the top three most probable situations. And in that moment that this is used as support and this white line becomes a positive slope, that means situation number two is less probable to play out, right? Because it looks like it'll be more probable to go up at that point. How high up, we would have to figure out after it starts going up, but it's most probably it'd take a big, uh, it take a big nose dive at 23K hit in the bottom of that trading channel that I showed you very earlier. Okay, now market open the timing. Now what we're gonna do for this uh, last portion of the, of the video is we're gonna zoom in to this part right behind me and how could how could you have tell how could you have told from Bitcoin specifically that the traditional markets would open up with a vengeance trying to backfill up? So let's go look at SPX and see this gap right here. That means that's where the last week ended, our Friday candle ended, right? This is a one hour candle. So actually, let's go to the daily candle. That's where Friday ended. M Monday start or Monday candle started low, but it wants to touch that. But it just it's called a backfill. It's filling the gap, right? A gap fill. And so how could you have told Bitcoin that that would be the play as opposed to coming out with a vengeance uh, selling off? And honestly, it's really simple. Um, the only hard part is, is understanding what to look for. And I'm going to break it down to you right now. I'm going to go to the five minute chart. And essentially what you're looking for after some type of move down. All right. I'm not looking for what people call an inverse head and shoulders, but it's it looks fairly similar. Let me zoom in a little bit more so we can get a good look at this. All right, does this look okay? So after some type of move down, where is my origin line? Oh, I'm on the wrong chart. Boom. All right. Check it out. How so Bitcoin doesn't always give the signal because whales don't come out playing with Bitcoin before traditional market open. So here's traditional market open exactly right here on this candle. OK. All right. So how could you have told before that uh, vertical line that I just drew? How could you have told that the market was going to race up to begin? I'm going to I'm on the five minute chart zoomed out just a little bit. Anytime doesn't have to be market open. This is just I'm trying to get you to understand the timing of this and what to look for in that area. After a drop down, you see some type of W shape. OK, some people call it head and inverse head and shoulders, whatever. But it's it, this always happens like this. Well, this signal will only happen after a drop. Typically, you have some type of drop. It doesn't have to be a new low or an all time low, just like a fairly aggressive drop anywhere. All right. And this happens on the one hour time frame uh, and lower. Typically, you won't see what I'm about to show you on the daily and then you have some form of neckline that is resistance. So you had a drop and from where it dropped creates a neckline. You get resistance, resistance. So it's sort of like a inverse head and shoulders, but here's the magic. Here's the magic. 
zooming in to this area right here. This is how you would have known before that happened that market that whales the play for today was to race up and grab liquidity high before more likely they slam it down. Now I'm going to zoom into the three minute. Whenever you see that w type of shape after an aggressive move down doesn't have to be like a, a capitulation just a, a sharp move down whenever you see it come up to test the neckline and then you get this shape of candles so it looks like a swoopy fashion but it's not just a swoopy fashion it's low volatility and it's like a perfect shape so this is the algos essentially saying we are getting ready so we are taking on longs all right or we already have taken on longs and we are getting ready to pump this, but they want to do it at the exact right time, but they're already ready with their longs, but they don't want to buy Bitcoin on spot, which means that's what makes it go up, the price go up so they can make profit on their futures, which is not buying actual Bitcoin, right? So futures are essentially an IOU contract. It's not real Bitcoin. It's paper Bitcoin. And it's just like, like it's pertaining to an exchange, right? It's just, it's not even real. <laughs> That's what futures leverage trading is. But uh, in order for them to make money off the longs that the whale, the big players took down lower, all right, they, they like the timing to be right. And, and what, how you can see that, and this is, this only works for up moves after, after big players have taken on enough short-term long positions. They wanted to wait roughly until market open, which is this blue line. So they needed to slow things down. They were ramping up their algos to get ready to really buy hard. And this is just what it looks like every single time. It makes this swoopy fashion after a W, after the neckline is tested once or twice. Uh, in this case, it was actually two times. And this was the third time it was uh, uh, tested. And you just see how the candles are just perfect. And it's the algo saying, okay, we're getting ready to pump it, but not yet. So we have to control price. We have to control price. Okay, now's the time. Bam. Now we're making profits on our lungs that we took and they hit it. Uh, so now let's go. What time was this? They hit that. Oh, it was only six minutes before six minutes before. So six minutes before you could have seen Bitcoin because it's the same players in the traditional market doing this. This is traditional market folks doing it. That's why it's time six minutes before the market open. It's their algos that control Bitcoin price, literally. So you can tell what they're getting ready to do because they make the same shape. So you can complain about manipulation, all that shit all you want, but manipulation makes patterns and it makes shapes and it forms patterns. That's the pattern. And this has a high hit rate of playing out. So, but you don't want to look for that uh, exact type of, you know, nice candle structure in a swoopy fashion after a neckline on something like daily candles. It's usually one hour candles, which would be a big move up. That would be like a 10% move up on Bitcoin. But the smaller the candles that this plays on, the smaller the move up. Five minute candles, okay, two to 7% pop up on Bitcoin, maybe more like two to five. All right, so actually let's uh, go here and measure how high this is pumped from there. So the smaller the candles that this forms on, the, typically the, the shorter the shelf life, therefore the smaller the uh, pump. So from the moment it created that U shape up to here, it's only 3%. So that's about right for the five minute candles having done this. And, uh, and so let's go back in time to see, you know, uh, if we can find some other of these shapes here. Um, I, again, I'm on the five minute chart. I did not plan this. I'm, I'm just seeing if I can, Ooh, this one is, there you go. So actually this one, this one is decent. So a sharp move down neckline net failure pattern. So tested once tested twice tested three times and then here so this this one happened over the neckline that's not as common but you can see here that the algos were getting ready to pump it up see that swoopy shape and the the uh, the algos were controlling price in a very tightly knit fashion that's it right there but it typically happens just below the neckline um this one happened over that neckline but it's that that that's the algos getting ready to pump it and it works almost every time like it, literally I, i'm telling you it's not every time um but uh but it works all the time. And this is really good. I mean, honestly, this is this information might, I mean, potentially might not, uh, shouldn't be free, but, <laughs> uh, you know, this is, this is some solid stuff to look at here. And I'm, tr I should have planned a little bit more on this, but, uh, that was the exact same shape. Does it happen all the time? Absolutely not. Let's see here. So sometimes here it happened, but it didn't play out as strong. Watch strong move down test, you know, roughly the neckline once, and then you form that swoopy pattern right swoopy pattern controlled price and it they tried to bring it up but it ended up really not actually no it did it went up later it just didn't go up all up at one point 
So you had that nice uh, swoopy pattern here and a swoopy pattern here after neckline was tested after a sharp drop down. So this pattern right here means price is getting ready to go up. This one's kind of a sloppy one, um, but and it usually means uh, resistance is getting ready to be touched and it's getting ready to fly through it. That's it. And again, the, um, the smaller the candles, the smaller the shelf life, the smaller the move, but you'll see it more often on the five minute candles. But if you see that type of swoopy pattern form on the one hour, that does increase slightly the chance that it's a fake out. But if it doesn't fake out and it does move, it'll be like Bitcoin would go up like 10%. Um, so you can see that on different time frames. I really hope this was helpful. Click this video right here if you're pissing around with futures and you're new at it and you want advice that you won't hear anywhere else. It could save you a ton of money. And click this video right here if you want my last food for thought video. You just got timbified worldwide. Peace.